So we got Spider-Man and we got Zod, and they're just stealing people's homes and ruining their lives. So basically, Man of Steel. Let's go, it's the Whitey Show. We're here to serve you with a court-ordered eviction. Okay, well... So, sir, ma'am, uh, do you have any weapons on your body or anywhere in the house that we need to know about? No, 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 no. no. Not Mr. Carver? Okay, so we got Andrew Garfield and Michael Shannon, basically the stars of this movie, kind of the only characters that really matter anyway. There's a lot of great character interaction but these two are the stars and the main people and it shows i don't know the director's name i'm not even gonna try i'll butcher the shit out of it if i do but he's the guy who made chop shop which you can watch on netflix still i think i watched it a few years ago and really enjoyed it i have not watched any of his other movies but i was really interested in this for two reasons the story is pretty interesting. Basically, it's all about eviction and the process of the bank taking back homes. And Michael Shannon is the guy that comes to your door, boom, boom, you're evicted, get out, you got two minutes. And then that happens to Andrew Garfield's character. And doing so makes Andrew Garfield need money. He needs to work. He needs to get his home back. It's his family home. So he starts learning from Michael Shannon's character and becoming basically a mini him. And that's how the story progresses. This movie is mostly really good in my opinion with some negatives. I'll get to the negatives, but let's start off with the good. The acting, phenomenal. Andrew Garfield is one of the best actors today. I will gladly say that. He gives everything. Every role he is in, you feel the passion, you feel the heart, you feel the excitement when he's on screen. And also, Michael Sh I mean, the dude's a, 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 one of the best. I mean, even movies that aren't as good as him, he still escalates the movie. I mean, look at Iceman. I mean, just wow. Surprisingly, the first about 15-20 minutes are intense. Like, intense. Like, you're sitting there like, you know what I'm talking about. And then the last about 10-15 minutes are also pretty intense. So the movie really does have these great suspenseful parts that make you kind of on your edge. So I loved it. I love those parts. Those parts are excellent. Also, I'm not all familiar with the process of eviction and all that stuff. So that was interesting to watch. They made it interesting. And I always love movies that take stuff that I am not interested in and make me actually invest in stuff like Chef, where I don't care about cooking all that much. I love that movie. I was into it. I wanted to become a goddamn chef. And this movie, I don't want to become a, an eviction guy, but I definitely was interested in seeing how the process worked. So they did a good job of explaining it enough, but not just throwing it in your face so much that you're like, oh god, shut up. Saying that, the movie storyline isn't as engaging as I was hoping. I didn't really care too much about the family here. Andrew Garfield's performance is absolutely amazing. And there's parts where I actually believe that he was legitimately, you know, everything that this guy was feeling in the movie, he was going forward with it and being like, Fuck you! And it felt like so real because his voice would crack and spit everywhere. Just like a real life situation. Not the fuck you when you just sound so determined. Nobody screams like that in a real argument. Movie, like I said, the first 20 minutes, some of the most intense scenes I've seen this year. And I loved it. And the music and everything. And then the last 15 minutes, great too. Everything in between is a kind of a slow burn. So it might affect some people. I didn't get bored or anything, but I did not really get that engaged either. Also, the editing. The director, I don't know what's with his editing sometimes. It's like really off. Like, it'll be like scenes that are just cut so quickly. Like this. And it's annoying. So, on YouTube, okay. Everybody does it. Fine. But in the movie, not so much. So, I, I didn't really get that either. And the last negative is that the conclusion was intense but it didn't feel like a conclusion you still had so many questions and i don't think this is based on real life so you don't know what happens and it kind of leaves it up in the air so i usually don't mind those type but i did hear because i wanted to know what happens so you kind of get an idea but not enough that you're satisfied but i did really enjoy 99 homes for the most part i think it's basically that i love these two actors and that's who the stars are in this movie they're going back and forth the dialogue is nice tight and fucking intense sometimes and the opening and ending are just memorable i'm always going to remember those seats but everything in between i kind of will probably forget so overall 99 homes is a good movie it's even great sometimes so that's why i'm going to give it a three out of five it's great at times 
At the same time, though, it's not great enough to be good all the time. It's not amazing, so I was a little disappointed by that. But still, I really did enjoy it. Definitely worth watching if you enjoy Spider-Man and Zod on screen together. If you don't, if you're not a comic nerd, Andrew Garfield and Michael Shannon on screen together. So go check it out. If you like this review, hit like. Hit subscribe if you love me. Everybody have a good day. More reviews incoming. Imagine if like Spider-Man was just like. Bitch, your movie sucked worse than mine. I got a question. You guys didn't get any uh, rescheduling of the what eviction What I received day. is a court order signed by a judge. It says you are to vacate these premises today.